have to share everywhere you've gone with algae and Absolutely. Shona. Yeah, so um, I'd like to welcome um, Ira Levine Ike, uh, uh, who is a professor at University of Southern Maine, and Shona Manning, um, research assistant professor at University of Texas at Austin. And um, the session we have is Algae Technology Education Consortium and Bioeconomy Workforce Education and Training. Thank you so much for joining us today. Well, I think we're going to junk this uh, lecture uh, and just go talk about the uh, uh, the different foods of India because I've lived there for about a year and a half, and my favorite is the Northeast uh, out in um, Manipur and Meghalaya, and they have the hottest peppers in the world. And so let's let's start there. <laughs> Can you all see the uh, presentation? Yes. Oh, great. Okay. So um, just uh, Shona, if, be ready to upload yours upon the completion of this one, but it's our pleasure to chat with you about um, uh, the efforts of ATEC um, and uh, biotechnology around the country, um, starting three, four years ago with Austin Community College and Linnea and Pornima uh, in getting them excited about uh, using algae um, as a source material, um, and why it's important, how can it be incorporated uh, into um, uh, the classic biotechnology programs uh, at both community colleges and universities. Um, and so that's what we're going to chat about today. I'll speak briefly about the entire program, and uh, Shona Manning will talk more specifically in terms of um, uh, the biotechnology aspects of biomanufacturing and algae. And so the first question people ask when we try to introduce the topic of algae is why algae? And so the first thing I'll say is take a deep breath and thank the algae for more than half of everything you've just taken in in terms of oxygen comes from the algae. And so on the upper uh, left-hand side, you see all the different products that come from algae. And um, algae is a huge word. And, and maybe people uh, generally don't realize it. That, you know, when you say the word plant or agriculture, that's as big a word as algae and uh, um, aquatic agronomy. And so uh, from, um, from pigments to foods to biofeeds to now biodegradable uh, flip-flops. I mean, think about that, having a flip-flop um, that if left on the beach will disappear within a year versus the flip-flops that last forever. And 500,000 of them have been ordered uh, for this year uh, out of California. So uh, the new products that are coming out of algae are remarkably exciting. Of course, what started the craze for uh, microalgae and now seaweeds uh, about 15 years ago is biodiesel. And as of yet, biodiesel has not been uh, made um, economically or to compete with uh, um, uh, cost of uh, biodiesel as it's uh, you know uh, harvested from the earth, but it, it's getting pretty darn close. And some very exciting news will be coming out of California within the next few months. Um, in the bottom, you see the uh, red pigment uh, astaxanthin. Uh, it's what gives the pink color to um, uh, to flamingos and to salmon, uh, and uh, the ability to now create. Um, uh, bio-based uh, astaxanthin is very, uh, very exciting. But more importantly, if you take a look at the lower right-hand side, if you look at some of the areas of human endeavor that can be serviced by large-scale algae farming around the world, you can see that almost every area of the human condition can be improved um, with algae. And so in terms of what we do, we're the Algae Foundation, and we formed uh, ATEC, the Algae Technology Educational Consortium, uh, through uh, constant or consistent funding from the Department of Energy, and now the USDA has joined in. And we have six major thrusts, um, and uh, as you see in the lower uh, left-hand side, uh, biotechnology, um, uh, and we, we give thanks to Austin community for being the hub of that effort. But before we get to that, we have what we call our interest generators, uh, both a K-12 
um, program that's reached over 80,000 students in the United States. Although I shouldn't say the entire United States, we're having trouble finding anyone in Wyoming. Uh, so we're in 49 states, but we, we promise when we come back and, and chat with you next year, it'll be 50 states. Uh, but the K-12 uh, interest generator has been very exciting uh, in terms of uh, raising awareness of algae and algal literacy. And the second is our massive open online courses or algae MOOCs. We actually have two of them, uh, Introduction to Algae and Algae Biotechnology. And these two courses have just reached as of Monday, over 20,000 students around the world. And in fact, speaking of India and this graph, India represents the highest um, number of participants this graph uh, result, uh, has resulted in training 102,000 students around the world and India actually, uh, excluding of course the Algae Academy, um, has sent the most students between the massive open online courses and uh, the Algae Extension uh, short courses. So we, we've been in partnership with, um, uh, with India for quite some time. Uh, under the interest generators, we have three main thrusts. We have a farming degree uh, with uh, totally new courses at Santa Fe Community College. Uh, we have the biotechnology curricula, which we'll go into mostly uh, for the rest of this uh, time uh, at Austin. And uh, our extension effort called ACES, the Cultivation Extension Short Courses. Um, and so we're, whoops, very pleased about that. Uh, and. At the bottom, it says jobs, but we produce zero jobs. What we do pr uh, produce is a trained workforce capable and ready to take those jobs. And so in terms of the academy, uh, the red dots are the schools around the country in, in which uh, we have placed uh, the academy. Uh, the green bars uh, illustrate our progress uh, over the last five years. And you can see in our year of COVID, uh, we pivoted to online. Uh, we did uh, experience, uh, you know, a dip of about 15,000, between 10 and 15,000 less students. But we are thrilled that uh, um, the COVID dip uh, uh, was not nearly as significant as it would have been if uh, Marissa Nally and Jake Nally over the summer had converted our uh, program from face-to-face -to, -face to uh, blended and online. Um, you know, how do we train these teachers to teach a, a, new, um, uh, a new set of curricula in their K through 12 classes? Well, we do it through webinars, but now we've developed a, um, a we've written a grant through the USDA that has helped us uh, take our Summer Algae Science Institute or SASEs nationwide. Uh, and uh, this year we will be doing an still uh, virtually, but uh, next summer we intend to go back to uh, doing it face to face. And these training programs are a way to introduce algae, the topic of algae, how to offer the curriculum in their classes, um, you know, supporting teachers to become uh, more comfortable, but also creating master teachers uh, so they can teach uh, 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 other teachers within their school and district to offer the uh, Algae Academy in their classroom. Our MOOCs, um, you know, people ask, what are, what's the relevance of these things? You know, they're online classes, anyone can sign up for them. And, and like everything that the, uh, the uh, ATEC offers, it's 100% free. Uh, but the biggest, um, the biggest um, relevant data point is 10% of those 20,000 people who took our course have either received a pay increase or a promotion uh, for taking the course. And so that's a remarkable, a remarkable statistic. Uh, you can see, though, we, we uh, certainly benefited from uh, uh, the new normal in terms of the pandemic. You can see we had upwards of an eight-fold increase in participation. Uh, it, as you can see, it's also come back down, although it is about twice as high as it was pre-COVID, where for each course, uh, we're um, experiencing about 100 new students each week. As you can see at the bottom, we have two additional uh, courses um, uh, in planning, uh, actually, the seaweed uh, biotechnology is about third done, and um, uh, and we hope to add a fifth in terms of harmful algal blooms. 
Uh, we've developed a micro-credentialing program or badging. Um, this, these are some of the 18 badges that we have for our cultivation degree. We are starting to develop uh, biotechnology uh, badging. Um, and as you can see that uh, this badging system uh, uh, was nationally endorsed uh, by the algae biomass organization. And again, I know I'm going fast, but uh, that's just to leave time for Q&A at the end. In terms of our cultivation degree uh, based at uh, um, uh, Santa Fe Community College, there we had to create whole new um, sets of classes and go through curriculum committees and new course degree committees and all the way through the New Mexico uh, Board of Ed. But as you can see, the uh, like biotechnology, uh, algae cultivation is an expensive degree. Uh, in the lower center, you see the outdoor laboratory, uh, not an inexpensive um, facility to build. And so I acknowledge as with biotechnology, it certainly takes a commitment from the administration and, uh, uh, and their instructors to, um, to embrace this type of uh, activities. Uh, one of the more popular courses that we developed is pumps and motors. I mean, nothing to do with the biology of algae, but uh, again, if you're out in the middle of the desert growing algae and something breaks down, it's, it's certainly uh, more beneficial for uh, the staff if they understand uh, uh, their, their infrastructure and have the ability to, um, uh, to develop uh, a fix. Uh, our uh, extension effort, uh, again, 66 countries, 66 countries. How the heck did, uh, I, I mean, I, I don't know that I could list 66, but as you see here, India, um, uh, Actually, I think India has overtaken and seaweeds has overtaken the United States in terms of a number of registrations. Um, but uh, we are awful proud of, of the depth and breadth of this extension, uh, uh, this extension program. And, and this is made for people who are already in aquaculture. You may be a shrimper or a catfish farmer. You grow uh, mussels or oysters. And to add um, uh, either seaweed, uh, kelp farming is exploded in the United States or our microalgae. Uh, our newest initiative is the gamification of algae. And this is what we're very excited about. We've uh, created a team of professional gamers, both uh, private uh, commercial gamers uh, and uh, university uh, professors uh, with um, Brigham Young University and University of Southern Maine uh, leading the effort. And we will be creating seven different types of game portfolios um, uh, I must admit, I have almost zero experience with uh, gaming, uh, unless we're talking Monopoly or, or Shoots and Ladders. And so uh, I am anxiously waiting uh, on our team to develop these efforts, including a board game, I mean, a physical board game, besides um, uh, all the web-based uh, and app-based uh, activities. Uh, the beautiful thing about it is, uh, in terms of simulation, um, we have uh, the United States Department of Energy's uh, seven-year database for growing algae. And so we can uh, include this real-life database into the game in terms of uh, simulation effort. So we're, we're very uh, pleased about it. Plus, it brings in an entire new set of learning outcomes that we, we never would have touched uh, prior to this. And here we are in terms of what we're trying to do uh, in terms of algae biotechnology. We have far more participants through far more schools than we do in terms of cultivation. Um, we developed this primer on the right-hand side, and that has our significant or, or our main, our first four insertable labs that are meant to go into different, uh, uh, different introductory uh, biotechnology courses. Um, we've also developed two separate one credit intensive lab courses and um, to make it easier for the instructors who may not have any experience in algae biotechnology. Um, and Shona Manning will talk about it. She developed what we call IGSOPs or the image guided uh, standard operating procedures. And this is a working document that allows the, the laboratory coordinator or the instructor to really dive deeply into the nuances of each of our labs that we've created for our partnering schools. 
And so we're very pleased to have that. And the reason we added uh, Kalyani, whoops, Kalyani uh, Matris, um, uh, what she thought of it is because we were surprised that universities are starting to pick up um, some of our curriculum. And so we never intended this. It was always, uh, you know, workforce development, education and training. And yet now we're finding the universities are feeling comfortable in picking up the, um, uh, the efforts. So we're very pleased by this. We didn't expect it, but we're uh, certainly um, uh, appreciative of now spreading um, uh, this learning opportunity to the university level. And these are the courses at ACC in which uh, they're embedded in. And again, I'm sure you're actually probably much better aware of these courses than I am, but uh, Shona will, will talk more fully about that. So these are the uh, one credit, uh, the two one credit intensive laboratories of which we developed the curriculum for that. We are working on, and, and although face some challenges, we are working on um, uh, new efforts in heterotrophic um, uh, curriculum. Um, Heidi Cunelli from uh, Hawaii has just um, patented um, how to grow um, hematococcus in the dark for the development of astaxanthin. She has agreed to join our team. And so we're very pleased to welcome her aboard and she'll be working on developing uh, new lectures and, and curricula uh, for heterotrophic growth of algae. And this is just a smattering of the IGSOPs. And uh, I think with this, I'll turn it over to uh, Shona to talk uh, the value and the nuances of why algae biotechnology is important, why, why algae is important for uh, all um, of humanity. And I think that's it for me. So I'll stop sharing or, yeah, there we go. Thank you. Donna, it's all yours. Perfect. Yeah, let me just pull that up momentarily. Um, let's just see here. Well, that just is for all people who know, that's the shortest I've ever spoken since I'm probably 20 years old. <laughs> all right, everyone can see my screen. Yes. Great. So you might be asking yourself, why algae? Um, you know, you're working with small beige microbes, uh, yeast and bacteria, but algae are really an example of biodiversity. And when we look at our big tree of life, we see that our animals are located here, which is this tiny little branch, but every single one of these gray arrows represents a group of algae that all originated from this blue-green alga down here. So really we have more genetic and biochemical diversity in the algae than all of the zoos and botanical gardens in the world combined. So we have a large foundation to work with. And so really we look at algae as being this interdisciplinary uh, intersection of very of different disciplines. So biology, ecology, and even biotech. Uh, so most people think of algae primarily for biofuels, but we've even had textiles and different bioproducts that we'll introduce you to so that you can start to integrate some of those thoughts into your future curriculum. So where I've worked for the past um, 20 years, uh, reluctantly saying that, is our one-stop algae shop, the UTEX, uh, University of Texas Culture Collection of Algae, located here in the bio building next to the very infamous main tower. And we have about a little over 3,000 different strains of algae at the culture collection that are either maintained as liquid cultures or as these agarized stocks. And so we provide these um, to the research community at large. Um, roughly 85% of the strains cannot be found anywhere else in any other collection. And we've been fortunate to be continuously funded by the National Science Foundation since 1976. And so just through the sale of cultures and media and various services, we're able to keep things afloat. And we've also provided educational workshops in the past on how to grow microalgae. And as you can imagine with this interest in biomanufacturing using algae as a new model organism, we've seen an increase in the interest for applied phycology. So you think there's a lot of basic ecology or, and things that people can look at, but biofuels, biofertilizers, different biomaterials, foods, feedstocks, uh, cosmeceuticals, 
pharmaceuticals. And so roughly half of all the cultures that we've been sending out for the past um, you know, 15 years or so have been for applied purposes. And so just to bring your awareness that we do have some basic teaching uh, tools at the UTEX website, including some photo bioreactors, all the algae that you can think of, as well as some um, ways to integrate uh, simply into your curriculum like this um, algae teaching kit for DNA barcoding that will align with the insertable module that I alluded to and I'll tell you a little bit more about. So when we think about applied phycology, we're really talking about algal biotechnology. And algal biotechnology is really using algae for a purpose, whether or not we're trying to get uh, specialized proteins, lipids and carbohydrates, we're making these biofertilizers or different nutraceuticals like astaxanthin, which is a pigment that has high antioxidant properties, as well as specialty chemicals. And we, we see as fuel as kind of being that, you know, bottom rung as far as economic feasibility, because many of these other compounds command a much higher price on the open market. And so if we think about algae, just like we think about uh, a microbe that we're growing as a model organism, they're basically photosynthetic machines. They need carbon dioxide, a set of nutrients and water, and they divide, divide, divide. So we think of every cell as a energy conversion factory. They can double much more quickly than plants, not quite as quickly as E. coli or yeast. But we can also fine tune them to produce specialized products like lipids, uh, various pigments and proteins. And so we really see that algae are an underutilized resource for biomass. So if we look at this barrel of oil, we can break that down into proteins, lipids and carbs and all the different residuals that you would see in a crude oil, uh, barrel of oil. But we're seeing all of these different bioproducts that are being produced from these different components from algae. And algae are also a source for bioremediation. Algae own the carbon cycle. So think about all the CO2 that's being pumped out into the air. We could take a slipstream of that carbon dioxide into an algae pond to help reduce some of that carbon output. As well as some nasty waters that are coming from effluents, we can utilize algae to sequester and uptake many of the nasty metals that are being released into our waterways. So many of the algae-based products are, uh, we wanna look at commodity products, but we're seeing that are more uh, higher value algal products that are coming out. Um, biofuels, we're looking to get somewhere around three to four gallon, three to $4 per gallon. But of course we haven't quite reached that particular level, uh, biofertilizer and feedstocks. But as you can see down here with higher value algal products, these command a much higher price per kilo. So some of the omega fatty acids that we find from algae um, are commanding anywhere between 50 to $200 per kilogram. And most people are buying fish omega oils for their nutritional supplements. Well, where do the fish get the oils? They're getting them from the algae. Uh, carotenoids are another um, area of interest with astaxanthin. Uh, sulfated polysaccharides are both antimicrobial and antiviral compounds and many other types of bioactives, including toxins that can be turned into therapeutics. So when we're looking at three to $4 per gallon versus $6.5 billion a kilogram, you can take bottle A or bottle B or try to exploit all of the biomass to get every bit of product out of it. So if you go to the grocery store, you're gonna see a lot of different products that already have algae incorporated. As Ike pointed out, we do, uh, you're, you're probably most common, uh, more, more familiar with the uh, seaweeds for sushi. But if you look on the nutritional um, portion or the ingredients, you'll see that there is a lot of different algae-based products there. Um, for example, look on the back of your ice cream, you might see carrageenan, or on the back of your toothpaste, carrageenan. These are colloids and things that keep um, things into, in an emulsion so that they don't separate also in paints and cosmetics. Um, your jellos contain algal-based products. And yes, we do have a picture here of the alien, the xenomorph from Alien, and that is complete courtesy of red algae. The entire structure, as well as all the oozy saliva was made from algae-based products. So even in the movies, we use algae biotech. 
So we started an effort about a decade ago on education and training along with Arizona State University through the Department of Energy. And we were uh, just trying to get people engaged on growing algae and looking at their utility. And through that effort, we educated over 300 participants from over 60 different institutions from around the world. And that was really a springboard going into the Algae Technology Educational Consortium, where Ike approached me about helping to move, uh, migrate some of that um, ATP3 uh, curriculum into the ATEC portfolio so that we can integrate algae-based laboratories into uh, community colleges, and now we're seeing four-year institutions take this up. Now, the biggest issue, or I guess the challenge with trying to change something in a college curriculum is that we have to go through a lot of approval processes. Um, but because we're just taking a simple organism and swapping that with a different skill set, skill set, sorry for the dogs, uh, we're essentially getting the same types of skills and outcomes from these types of trainings to help generate um, a new generation of biotechnologists. So, apologize for the dog. Peanut. So here is an overview of the insertable that um, I alluded to. Essentially, this is going to be a, a flavor of the different types of laboratories that are available for inserting into your curriculum. And this is, again, uh, just some basics on cultivating algae. Um, DNA barcoding of microalgae, uh, sequencing analysis uh, using bioinformatics, and as well as extracting uh, and the analysis of microalgal lipids, and then also manufacture of an algal product. So each of these are available to you as if you sign an MOU with ATEC, you get this for free and you get my guidance on how to implement them into your curriculum. And as he mentioned, we do have both laboratory intensive one and two which equates to over 80 hours of content. And we're trying to deliver those each in one week format, as he mentioned. And so this is kind of broken down. Um, every participant that would come into this laboratory would have a manual that they'd be able to read. And then they would have a schedule, a very packed schedule on going through all of the different um, laboratory modules and then assessment at the end to get some type of credit and or micro badging credential. The second one also um, is set up the same. The first one is more on molecular biology and cultivation. This is on biomass metrics and biochemical characterization, but it really includes a very thorough schedule packed from eight to five every day, all algae, all the time. And so we had to have a strong pivot with uh, COVID and that actually uh, put us in a good space to start developing some online training modules. And so that's where the, uh, the image guided standard operating procedures uh, were birthed. And essentially this is to help prepare both instructors and students before ever entering the laboratory. We do have seven different IGSOPs already in line with the primer that was developed. And I'm currently developing 12 more IGSOPs that will help to complete both um, intensive one and intensive two so that we have that complete set of both the laboratory curriculum plus the online training modules. And so just a flavor for the types of slides that you might encounter with these image guided standard operating procedures. Um, in, in addition to the step-by-step -step components, it's going to outline materials, equipment, and reagents so that students and instructors can identify all of the materials that they need to get the um, experiment started. And then we have lots of other activities that are planned and ongoing. Um, Ira did talk about uh, the heterotrophic growth. So we're talking about algae in the dark as being uh, led. We got um, Heidi, but also Jim DeClo and Phil Piancos, who's retired uh, from NREL. We are going to be putting uh, together genetic modification of prokaryotic algae, as well as some complementary IGSOPs, uh, genetic engineering of eukaryotic algae, as well as some IGSOPs. And then we've also had a request for developing IGSOPs for the algae farming degree. So as you can see, algae are a tremendous resource uh, that are largely underutilized. We're not asking you to convert everything to algae, although we would be pleased if you were to consider at least one of your laboratories with algae. 
because the end of, at the end of the day, we're really looking at workforce development. And all of these skills that you would normally use for a microbiology lab can be translated to algae and vice versa. So if a student learns about media preparation for uh, bacteriology, they can also learn about uh, media preparation for algae cultivation, along with a whole suite of similar types of skill sets. So really I'll conclude with what can't algae do. We can get all of these various things from this pond, whether it's nutraceuticals, um, we can again remediate wastewaters, aquaculture, fertilizer, human food. And so from a biomanufacturing standpoint, algae are green and clean, but we can also grow them in the dark for fermentation type of um, manufacturing. This is a really busy slide of all of our partnerships and alignments uh, throughout ATEC, and we hope that you will be able to join us as part of our algae efforts. Then, of course, we would just like to thank you and invite any questions. Again, I did speak quickly, Ike spoke quickly, but we're hoping to get uh, lots of questions so that we can help get you engaged with algae. Thank you. So I'll go. Um, I noticed when you were talking about the skill set associated with culturing and doing extractions from these organisms, that there's a great deal of skills overlap with general molecular and biotechnology techniques. Have you all identified any techniques that are highly specific to algae? It's culture, extraction, anything that would be um, distinct to this field? I think, yeah, Angela, I think the primary thing we have to keep in mind is that algae grow much more slowly than our standard microbes in the laboratory. For example, with E. coli, we'll get, you know, a doubling every 20 minutes at, you know, our incubation temperatures, but algae are all very unique in their growth rates. So it's more that we just have to pump our brakes a little bit more when we have expectations about getting things to grow more quickly. So that's really just the patience key that has to go in, into place um, because they're not going to grow um, like your standard uh, fermentation type organisms. So what would be a typical doubling time for a population like that? Well, for a good one that I, I can give you, it's like, you know, doubles once a day and that's a good scenario but we're not getting doubling every 20 minutes. Thank you. I, and I'll just add one more thing. Um, you know, algae do have some very complex cell wall structures, which can be a little bit recalcitrant to lysis. And so there's a few more tricks to breaking the cells open to get uh, some of the materials we want to extract. Donna? Or, and Ike, maybe, I'm not sure who's gonna be the best person to answer this. Where would I find a good, up, besides our website, where would I find a good up-to-date list of companies that are involved in algae? So I can make sure we're comprehensive. Well, I think uh, one of the places to look would be the Algae Biomass Organization's uh, okay. website. They have a tremendous inventory of uh, um, companies that are involved either as direct members of the ABO, but also in terms of a listing uh, 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 of uh, companies um, by output. Also, can you tell me what would a, a typical job title be for somebody who is working at a technician level in algae? Well, I'll, I'll just say uh, for, for people that I hire, they're usually um, hired at a research assistant, one, two, three, just depending on the um, level of experience that they're coming in with. And um, of course, job titles change from each institution, but you know, uh, but essentially a technical level, uh, we're not always looking for a degree. Most of the time we're looking for the skill sets that they're coming with the skill sets and they're ready to jump in and start helping out with the laboratory work. Well, let, let me explain why I was asking. So mm -hmm. we've been adding a job search feature to biotech careers. And so the other day I searched for cell, ther cell, cell therapy and gene therapy and I could find you know, a couple hundred jobs in Washington, right? With those terms, if I search for algae, I find nothing. So I'm wondering what, you know, what titles or what, what, I, what I might use to search to find jobs in the algae industry. 
That's a good question. I, I don't know if you have a better answer because we usually just have, um, you know, research assistant or biotechnologist and it's a pretty broad categorization It doesn't have a lot of specialty to it um, in the job description itself, it would certainly have the particulars regarding what would be required for, um, you know, being successful at the job, but I don't think we have solid titles uh, for those types of uh, positions. Ike, have you heard of anything in particular? And that's a good point she makes because in term, there's two ways to, to um, guide you through that answer. First, in terms of a larger companies, they might be aquaculturist one, two, and three. Okay. They could be technician one, two, and three, um, or associate uh, uh, researcher or associate um, aquaculturist. But more importantly, when we were evaluated by um, uh, the external review board at ACC, uh, whether or not to endorse the inclusion of um, uh, algal-based biotechnology. Um, as, uh, algae, and we, the first example was cell wall lysis. Um, we're not kit driven, we're, you know, it's more old school. And so the learning may be a wee bit deeper and that when, when it was uh, looked at more critically, the, the external review board really appreciated and embraced the fact that uh, our students are getting a deeper appreciation for what's actually going on. If a kit doesn't work, do students or, or introductory technology uh, uh, professionals really know how to, to examine what's not working? Whereas when you're starting from scratch, you have a, a greater appreciation for uh, the mechanisms that are actually going on in the reactions. And so, although there aren't that many algal based, jo strict algal based jobs, it was appreciated that perhaps algal based instruction within the degree program produces um, better, more deeply, un more deeper understanding of the actual um, uh, physiology that's involved in the molecular biology and thus making better technicians. And so um, uh, just think of it 15 or 20 years ago uh, before you had such established you know, organisms uh, for biotechnology. This is just the next uh, hub of biotechnology in its infancy. I just okay. wanna um, say that's, that's really actually very important to us because um, our industry has indicated too many um, people who apply for technician jobs, like from four-year schools who haven't gone through our program, um, they've only used kits and they don't understand how the kit works. They don't understand the chemistry. They don't understand physical properties. Um, having to work with algae and break them open and they're all different gives the instructor an opportunity to go through more of the chemistry and physical properties of the organism and how to leverage that knowledge in extracting DNA or breaking them open. So it's just like bacterial work was 25, 30 years ago. That's an advantage for students to be able to master that. Oh, and one thing I wanted to mention to Ira and Shona, um, Angela is our expert at badging. You'll have to talk to her sometime about what she's doing for the biotech industry. So You're my I new had best mentioned... friend, Angela. <laughs> so no, really. <laughs> she's doing an excellent job of creating badges for biotech. So at some point you should talk to her. You'll be on speed dial, Angela. Um, I was going to mention, I saw here in the chat, uh, you know, mentions about Malaysia, Indonesia. And I, I will say that I did have a fantastic collaboration with some folks out in Indonesia on the island of Java, where I started them with 15 mils worth of uh, culture of Hematococcus pluvialis. And we are now growing that at over 130,000 liters and one set of bioreactors for the production of astaxanthin oleoresin that is being packaged into nutraceuticals. Um, so, uh, and Indonesia is probably one of the, the largest seaweed producers in the world. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities um, everywhere for, for algae and we're happy to help. 
I'm excited to hear you talking about astaxanthin. Um, I have a lot of friends in the Bay Area who are now mega dosing in it because it's the only antioxidant that they've found in existence that you cannot overdose. It has no toxicity. Uh, mild stomach disturbance is the worst that they've managed to induce in high doses. They're seeing extraordinary outcomes from it. It's, it's fascinating stuff. Well, are they turning red yet? Their poop is red. <laughs> yes, but you, you, you must be careful. When you say no toxicity, you're talking the bio uh, produced. If you're looking at Hoffman LaRoche's um, uh, artificially produced, because of the, the orientation of the molecule, you, you, there is a limitation to how much okay. you can take. Yeah, the standard. It would be interesting to read anything you have on that. I get out of my Bay Area friends, I get about two to three emails a day saying, can I take this? Can I take lots of it? Is it safe? And that one's the new one that they're all doing. So Yeah, it's kind of like the carrot craze back in the 80s, but people were drinking so much carrot juice that they were turning orange. So this is a similar type of molecule that can bioassimilate into the fat tissues and can make you a bit red. And yes, yeah, we do have to be about careful the about the natural astaxanthin because the stereoisomers that, that are produced from the synthesis, there's only about one portion out of six that is actually bioavailable. Got it. Yeah, I just heard they're getting red poop. And when, when they send me something like this, I actively set out to discredit it because they can be so crazy. You know, all of them believe a little bit's great and a lot of it is going to be fantastic. So I usually try to discourage them. I could find very little negative reporting on that particular antioxidant. So it's it, it made for interesting reading. So far, so good, Angela, yeah. Shauna, if you needed any help with um, bioprospecting ideas in Sarawak, I'm the one who put it in the chat. Um, I do have connections there. I worked on some algae work many years ago. It's fantastic. No, any, see, that's where we're really limited in our culture collections and just broadly with algae is that we have projected that there are more than 100,000 different species that are available. And we're probably predicting more than a million different ecotypes or strains that are out there. So the real limitation is just people getting out to the field and mm -hmm. isolating these new um, algae. And you have a perfect place to reposit those algae. So as long as you have um, the location that you sampled from, the you, know, you got your lang longitude, latitude, um, the source water that it came from, um, UTEX is happy to house any well-characterized alga. Uh, and of course, I do have to mention the Nag Nagoya protocol, and that's where we do have to be a little yes. bit more um, aware of the source of the material, uh, because we are very much on the side of making sure that countries do not get uh, ripped off because some great biotechnology comes out of a region, but it's developed somewhere else where the funding is a little bit more uh, available. So if you, if you need to know more about the Nagoya Protocol, it's essentially um, that we're protecting third world countries and other places where, uh, say, plants and botanicals and algae are included on that list, where uh, new future pharma and other antioxidants are being resourced, and where pharmaceutical companies can, uh, you know, have deep pockets and develop something very quickly, um, the source country would be missing out on that revenue. So we're, we're preventing that. Oh, that's wonderful. So yes, Sheila, please get out there and bioprospect. <laughs> okay, I will. One more thing to do. If any of the schools that are uh, on this um, workshop uh, are interested um, in any of our curriculum, as uh, Shona mentioned, access to uh, everything that the foundation does is 100% free. Uh, she did mention an MOU, which is just a one page memo that says you're willing to co uh, collaborate with the foundation, uh, please contact me uh, at ilevine at maine.edu. And uh, we're more than happy, you know, our goal is to, to try to be in, involved with every school that offers a biotechnology degree in the country to embrace and include in some fashion you don't have to take all the curriculum. You could take a lab, all the labs, somewhere in between. 
um, and we will provide access to Shona. She's our Dr. Phil or uh, or the, the Dr. N no, Bill Nye, the science guy for algae. Um, and, you know, we literally um, support her in, in having a tech office hours. So if there are questions or need training for your lab supervisors, uh, that's what we're here for, to support each and every school. Uh, this summer's activity at ACC is to make sure that um, every lab is seamless, uh, that every lab, uh, the nuances uh, and the areas that usually go wrong or, or challenging are, are highlighted um, and pointed out in advance to minimize frustration, make sure that the samples are appropriate and fresh. Um, and so, again, there are frustrations with algae. They grow slow. They need extra equipment. You need light. Imagine that. You absolutely need light, uh, except for when you grow them in the dark. But, but the point <laughs> is, algae is a different animal. Oh, it's not an animal at all. Algae is a different organism. <laughs> And we're here to support each of the schools and trying, you know, the, the, to develop the nuances uh, and the capability of adopting it as a new technology for the future. And um, as I said, the, within the next six months, there'll be some spectacularly exciting news out of California in the first step mm -hmm. of um, developing uh, the ability to, to uh, grow microalgae in uh, gigaton scale um, sizes. So we're very excited about that. And um, if you thought the craze over the last 15 years was uh, mesmerizing, once you'll be able to um, produce um, microalgae for fuel and feed, um, the demand for algal literacy and algal based programs will explode. Excellent. Thank you so much, Shona and Ike. This has been wonderful. Um, I appreciate you coming in. LG, the products. So. Well, our pleasure. And if you want to have another workshop on India and her food, I'm all there. <laughs> I'm there too. <laughs> <laughs>